Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, I'm your humble host, Jazz Borgonzo, and this is another episode of What's Next. This week has been incredibly nutty. Uh, everything from uh, the Obama administration's world record pace in regards to how many executive orders I can sign before my wrist breaks Joe Biden, uh, to uh, people getting arrested because of memes. Uh, we, that's a story we're going to touch upon uh, today. Uh, and also the incredible uh, wow story uh, in regards to uh, Reddit, Wall Street, GameStop, uh, Robin Hood. Uh, that has just uh, that has just exploded uh, and basically taught us, uh, actually showed the corruption of how, uh, or should I say, truly how Wall Street is. But <clears throat> we're going to touch upon three stories. Uh, try to knock these out real quick. A um, couple stories that uh, went underneath the radar, maybe, for you. Uh, but I feel that uh, two of them are very uh, influential in regards to domestic and foreign. Uh, and one, uh, it's got a little spice to it, but at the end of the day, it's like, why? Story number one. A uh, man in Florida was arrested on Wednesday in regards to uh, suppression of votes by using social media in regards to Hillary Clinton and the 2016 election. A complaint that went out to one Douglas Mackey, also known as Ricky Vaughn on the internet, for those who don't know Major League, um, was anonymously conspiring with others in 2016 to use Twitter to basically influence voters to vote via text versus showing up at the polls, basically constituting a meme. Saying, you know what? Don't go here, go here. Don't use this, use that. So let's arrest him. William Sweeney, head of the FBI uh, office in New York City, basically said, quote, this scheme amounted to nothing short of voter theft. Voter theft. Six states, 2020. Just saying. Also, quote, it is, it is illegal behavior. Cons contributes, excuse me, to the erosion of the public trust in, of our electoral process. The erosion of our public trust electoral process. So when you had groups of people in 2020, six states, discrepancies, irregularities, we have questions, we want answers, you know, millions and millions and millions of mail-in votes that the system was not meant to handle. It was not meant to handle this amount of what used to be called absentee voting. And it imploded on itself in regards to six states. It's not what the founding fathers meant it to be. They meant it to be to you for you to vote in person. Now, of course, with Corona and all, I understand the elderly uh, those uh, with uh, prior issues, you know what? I can't go out in person. I rather vote. In, I rather vote by mail. <clears throat> That's fine. That's okay. But not to the tune that we have seen or that we saw in 2020. So when people had questions about it, they were told to sit down and shut up. But this, from four years ago, from one guy. Well, you need to be arrested and possibly face charges up to 10 years, if convicted. Reminds me of a story of one Count Dankula, a YouTuber who taught his dog how to do the Zeke Heil. Of course, he's from Germany. Now, the whole situation with Hitler and in, in, in Germany, understandably, very touchy subject. He was almost sentenced to prison time. Had it not been so much social media pressure that eventually the charges were dropped. And that was about two, three years ago. So, but now you arrest a guy 
you know, because this goes against democracy. Our democracy, being that we're a republic, but facts. Uh, so, guys, I need to keep an eye on this because, as we saw with the great digital purge right after the January 6th incident, you know, making Parlor go away, doing an Alex Jones on Parlor, uh, millions of followers being purged from thousands of accounts in Facebook and Twitter, you know, going after other alt tech because they have a different opinion and 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 we can't have that. Got to keep an eye on it. Because if they can go after them, they can go after you and me. You know, what did I do? I meant you and me. Yeah. But think about that. Topic number two. Biden declares Trump two-state solution dead and buried. Now, this is something that went underneath the radar. Uh, this uh, uh, proposal that was uh, uh, by one President Donald Trump, uh, his vision of peace, um, pretty much lasted a couple hours and was uh, shredded and burned the second O'Biden took office. Why? Well, it took a Twitter page to do so. <clears throat> when you went under the Twitter page for the ambassador of Israel, it said U.S. ambassador of Israel. But moments later, it was changed to U.S. ambassador to Israel, West Bank, and Gaza because of inclusion. We know because of diversity, we have to get everybody involved, uh, make sure the Palestinians, uh, they're, um, they're, 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 you know, they're noticed. What it comes down to is that Israel has bent over backwards. Israel has gone above and beyond regarding the West Bank and Gaza Strip since its inception as a state, a formally recognized state in 1948. For decades. But here's a fun fact. Only two times in Israel's history regarding the United States and regarding its Middle East uh, neighbors has there been an agreement? 1979, with then President Jimmy Carter, Israel, and Egypt, they were he was able to negotiate a deal between these two countries. Fast forward to 2020, you had Israel and the UAB with Donald Trump presiding as arbiter. Think about that. Two times in less than five decades. Or four decades. Donald Trump negotiating peace in the Middle East. Something that O'Biden will never do. Will never accomplish in his... He'll be here for a year. But during the eight years when he was vice president with Obama, they never did that. Obama, the uh, grand poobah, the uh, great appeaser, the great buck kisser, who threw U.S. under the bus during his great world tour beginning in Cairo in 2008. Look it up. So that may be something you may need to keep an eye on because uh, I guarantee you right now Israel is not liking it. And Benjamin Netanyahu, who is uh, the prime, prime minister or president of Israel, will make that very, very clear to Obiden. This regards a walking dead. And uh, they decided to do a gay storyline. And of course, fans are not liking it. And of course, fans made their, <clears throat> made their points very clear on Twitter and on Facebook. You know what? We're not liking it. Here's a big thing. Why? It's about zombies. Why? It's about tribes. Why? Well, you know, AMC has to jump on, uh, you know, the politically correct tour. You know, they have to jump on that train to make sure that, you know, there is uh, a, a, a diverse storyline, an inclusive storyline. Pretty much a politically correct baloney storyline. 
and we and we and they know for a fact that fans of the show aren't going to really care. They don't really care. They don't. So when you have fans who basically who basically talk back and say, "Hey, you know what? We don't care about this. Why are you putting this in the storyline 10 11 seasons later? We don't care." And as anybody knows who's a fan of the show, knows that the show has dipped off ratings dramatically over the last three to four years ever since the character Sheriff Rick left the show. But of course, their response is, you don't like it, please unfollow us. You don't like it, go somewhere else. This is what happens when you introduce political correctness into anything, whether it be sports, movies, television. It eventually gets up. And that's what happened with this. And that's why fans are basically, you know, talking back and voicing their opinion regarding it. But no, no, no. AMC won't have anything about that. No, no, no. The Walking Dead uh, producers won't have anything of that. You don't like it? We don't give a damn. Drop dead. Now, you lost a lot of fans the last three or four years with the ratings, you know, with the ratings starting to drop off. Now you're going to lose even more. Just saying. And with that, I'm going to end this segment right here. I'm Jazz Brogonzo. This is what's next. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.